Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the channel. I'm Lorena's Labyrinth for this video today on the Angel Hamid. Uh, just in case you're not aware, if you're a newbie, my name's Anna and I own Lorena's Labyrinth. If you're a returning visitor, I would also like to acknowledge you and the newbies and say thank you so very much for joining us. Now, as I said, we're going to be talking about Hamid today and his role is the Angel of uh, Miracles and I sincerely hope that anybody that's watching or listening to this video is actually able to gain something helpful that will strengthen their divine connection and their faith and hope and trust in universal processes. And before I get into it though, I would like to invite you to share your own experiences of angels. And if you've got a miracle story that you're comfortable sharing with um, the rest of us, please do write in the comments below because it's just lovely. It's really heartwarming. Um, what else can I say? Just from the get-go, before I get into it, Hamid will always present in the masculine form, but not necessarily, of course, as with this image, and highly unlikely, in fact, that he will, because this image is the result of me working with AI to try and create um, something really special for you. I like to be visually creative at times as well. So throughout this video, we will be talking about what constitutes a miracle and what a miracle is. Um, but in my experience, this is why I understand this to be that the goal of Hamid and in particular miracles is to spark this memory of divinity, our belief and faith and trust, like I said before, in something greater than ourselves. And it does take a miracle to do this. You know, sometimes we can make excuses for little mini miracles as just being coincidence or whatever. But in my experience too, I was encouraged to test it out um, in the early days. And I will give you some strategies as well to test it out to help build your own faith. Because it doesn't always have to be a great big miracle like the parting of oceans or whatever. The angels are only too happy, particularly Hamid, to step in and um, show us a miracle to help us believe you know what I mean to restore that faith if it's been lost now before I get into that stuff too much uh, because of course I've tried and pace myself a little bit I want to actually talk about the image here a little bit more because with him as I've put him here there's a couple of reasons why this actually is not a true image the reality is Hamid comes with a very brilliant and dazzling white light now if you've got developed clairvoyant skills it's likely that the light is going to be so bright that you actually won't see his um, outline if you like or any type of physicality within his aura but you might see his eyes okay because sometimes this is what some people say that they've seen but for others it will simply be this brilliant brilliant white light and he if you do get to see him he will as I say, present in a masculine form because he's one of the seraphim angels. And we'll talk about that in a little while as well on the next slide when we talk about the hierarchy and their purpose. But when we talk about the seraphim, they will always present as masculine where the cherubim are always going to present as feminine, um, even though angels, of course, are genderless. Now, when we talk about this brilliant white light that creates the aura of Hamid, some people call that the Christ light because it is a very... Um, powerful light of love that reflects the creator love and for Christians they associate that obviously uh, with Jesus Christ uh, where he watches over and waits for opportunities to create a miracle for us in our lives so just to reiterate his goal of creation is to spark the memory of your divinity or mine or ours so when we talk about the seraphim and the cherubim, they're actually part of the one um, angelic order. So it's not called the seraphim order and it's not called the cherubim. It's the seraphim and the cherubim. And this is because if you think about this, I want to put this to you, that when uh, we're talking about the creation of life in any way, shape or form, we're talking about a balancing of the polarities. And when we talk about energy, we talk about masculine or feminine type energy or active and intuitive, you know, I've got whole videos on what this actually means. Um, but within the seraphim and cherubim, they actually balance each other because the seraphim have the masculine energy where the cherubim have the feminine. And together, they, um, each one of the angels in these this order, they actually present with very vivid colors and they have brighter auras than the other 
angelic orders. Uh, some of them obviously manifest with the pastel type colors, whereas with seraphim and cherubim, it's all about bright colors. Um, the seraphim and cherubim together, they're the details. They pay attention to the minute detail of all their activities and they strive to make life artistic and entertaining and they like to incorporate ceremony and blessings into whatever activities they do. Now, I just want to make a couple of other points here about the seraphim and the cherubim. I think this is based on my experience that when we are interacting particularly with this angelic order, they have a great sense of humour. They're, um, they're powerful, but they are compassionate and loving and dependent on the particular angel they're going to have or its role they're going to have a sense of fun about them now my experience because i actually have been privileged to have a number of miracles or things occur that i consider to be miracles is that it was done with fun and it's just so light it just when we talk about emotions it's um it's like a bliss and this is why some people can become uh, truly ungrounded. I, I make comments about it, that it's so beautiful and blissful that it's very easy to go, you know what, I prefer to be out here with the angels than uh, with my feet planted firmly on the earth. But anyway, back to the seraphim. Um, they know what guilt feels like. I'm not going to get into it why. And they know what sacrifice and loss feels like too. And so this is part of their task when working with humans is to help us to overcome feelings of guilt, um, to shift beyond it, to release any feelings of sacrifice and loss, and um, to, to step into our power, okay, because a lot of people are frightened of becoming a powerful person. And for the seraphim, they actually want to empower us so that we can be those powerful people and to release guilt. because when we are aligned with the creator and coming from a space of power and feeling powerful we can do great things for everybody for the creator for the angels for everybody that's working on the planet so everything they do obviously is to restore faith but also to help us to reclaim the power that we've given away to others around us so this is my understanding of the wisdom that Hamid tries to share with us and the seraphim, right, is that everything that we are surrounded by is basically atomic matter, even though we can't see it. And because matter is atomic and so small, it can be shifted with ease. It can be redefined. And so because we as humans we've forgotten that we can actually do this shifting and to change the form of things with the power of the mind the angels are here to remind us that actually it can be done and it can be done to some extent with ease some people can still do it by the way and it's called shape shifting it doesn't necessarily mean um you know like we read in the books i think we've got too many movies out there at the moment that create or foster myths, but um, to, sh to change the shape or change the form of something is a form of shape shifting. And because we as human, we've, humans, we've got this rigid way of looking at the world and it limits our perception. And so the idea of Hamid is to draw to our attention that we can do it, um, but also he shows us how to do it because he shows us through example how to create miracles. There's a little more to this feel free to put your own comments up as well here as to what your thoughts are but the wisdom here if i was to summarize it is to say that we might consider it to be a, mir a miracle but at the end of the day it's entirely possible and he just tries to show us how it happens i'll go into it a little difficult uh, in a little minute it's it sounds a bit elusive doesn't it and this is the problem with trying to articulate and express with language as well so the difficult with uh, difficulty, if I can speak, I'm struggling with English as my first language today. Um, the difficulty with trying to use words to explain um, divine experiences is that we can't actually express and articulate it. Now, the point being that angelic consciousness is 
often beyond our human comprehension and understanding. And so what we perceive as miracles is often the angelic blessings. Okay, they consider it they're giving us a blessing or a gift rather than a miracle. Um, and to be honest, they actually want us to ask for those blessings. They want us to be open to receive the blessings and the miracles. So this is just to reiterate, specifically Hamid as the angel of miracles, he thrives when you call upon the creator if you're in a crisis and desperation and will respond quickly to the call. But at the same time, the message is that these are not the only times that you can call for a miracle because the angels also love to play and be joyous and to have fun. And you only have to ask. And, you know, this whole thing of, you know, when you call, find um call for simple things you can test it they're happy to be tested don't believe this stuff where people turn around somebody said to me many years ago you cannot test divine energy you cannot test the angels this is what i got told and i thought well hang on a moment right if we think about this and we put some rational um to the process ideas such as you can't that's a limitation okay if we say that the um divine energy and divinity and the creator is unlimited then that just doesn't tie in with the fact that you can't test the energy or that you can't test angels and try it out for yourself i mean so where i'm going with this is i process this for a little bit i'm interested in your feedback and what i decided to do was actually test it and I would do things like um, state questions like, well, if there's if angels are true, in fact, actually, this was the first one that I ever did because I read a book on angels and I thought it sounded like bollocks. And um, so I was driving in an area where quite often I would have to do laps for about an hour before I would actually get the car park. So, uh, you know, within at least walking distance to wherever it was that I want to go. So I decided that I would test it out. If you can hear all this pitter patter happening, it's the little puppy dog is running rampant around the house, must be on a high. Um, but anyway, I decided, yep, okay, I'm going to put this out to the universe. As usual, I gave myself a good hour and a half before I needed to attend my appointment so that I could find the perfect parking bay. But what I did was I actually put together my own little affirmation, which was along the, the lines of, I give thanks for the perfect parking bay that I will find at the perfect time under grace in the divine way. Thanks be, all right? I might put this quote up here on the slide. I, as I record this, I don't have it up there, but I think I will put it up there just as an example. Anyway, where I'm going with this is um, I put that out there before I jumped in the car and left my driveway and I was able to get a parking spot. I just drove straight into town, into my parking spot, right out front where I needed to be. Perfect. Okay. I could not believe it and I thought that was a coincidence. Okay. So what I did was, um, and when I say having these feelings, when these little miracles happen, it's just so much fun. It just brings so much laughter. So me being who I am, I decided that I wasn't going to settle for it once. I actually tried it again and again. And in the end, I didn't need to actually ask. I would just get in the car and say, I'm going into town. I give thanks. Right. And I always found a parking bay. Now, the thing with a miracle is Quite often we see it as a miracle the first time it happens, maybe the second time, third time, fourth time, whatever. But after a while it becomes normal. And one day I had to give a lady a lift into town under the same circumstances and I didn't realise that I had become so used to this miraculous business of getting a parking bay when historically nobody could. And I had to take this lady to a specialist appointment. I said to her, look, I'll come by, you know, at a normal time where you wouldn't have to wait and pick you up and take you into town. And um, anyway, I told her what time. She said, don't you think we should leave earlier because she couldn't walk? Um, she said because, well, she couldn't walk distances. She said because um, of this parking issue. She said, I don't know anybody that can get a parking bay. And I said, no, no, it's all right. We've got it covered. I didn't even think about it. This is just how I was living at the time. I said, no, no, it's all right. I'll come by, I'll pick you up. It's all good. So I picked her up and I dropped her off. We went straight into town and I parked directly out the front of where it was she needed to go for her appointment. And she just sat there for a moment and she was just looking at me. She said, how did you do that? She said, how did you do that? I said, it's not me, it's them. They are so good. I think that was a bit of a way of um, her being persuaded that miracles are true as well. 
So where I'm going with this is basically test it, be open, have fun, release expectation. And the parking space was just an example. So we see the creator's love and Hamid's love for us when we find ourselves in dangerous situations and something totally unexpected will happen to save us. And often, um, so these are the times most people call when we come up against insurmountable obstacles. And that can include in the workplace between family members and relationships. It can be a random event um, and suddenly you'll find a workable solution appear and a favourable outcome for everybody. Now, if you or somebody you love or care about is close to death with no hope of recovery, sometimes you know we can't control the destiny um if you like or, and we have no um actually i've got to i'm trying to think how to phrase this we can always invoke and call for a miracle when it's related to health type stuff um but in my experience sometimes it will occur and sometimes it won't and my understanding is that that's part of a divine plan it might be in the blueprint that a person has to pass on at a certain time i know this just sounds so bizarre but i've learned enough now to just respect and accept and so i would always if i was going to um, call for a miracle for somebody in regard to health I would put in that clause of divine way under grace and this kind of thing to make sure that I'm not imposing my will above divine will. I think I have a story, but I'm not sure that I could probably do it justice by sharing it here. It was one of the most amazing, breathtaking miracles that I have ever experienced and it involved being in a car and not actually being able to see where I was driving. And I know there's going to be people out there that will listen to this and go like, oh, pff, whatever, rubbish, rubbish. Um, but it was one of those occasions where I was driving with my children in the car. There was a crisis happening. I called, I panicked because I took a bend at too high a speed and I was on a dirt road and I just thought that I was going to lose the car and roll it. So I actually did some really intensive invocation in the moment as I was driving and the energy became so intense. Now where I'm going with this is without telling the whole story, I was in the lead vehicle and so there were other vehicles behind me and they were in my trail of dust. You may as well say it was an urgent critical situation. and. Um, what has stayed with me because this was my first really big miracle um oh i get goosey just thinking about it anyway once we reached our destination the guys that were just some burly truck driver miners um, from a local mine that i was leading them in to try and um, help somebody in a situation for one of a better description um they were equally buzzing they didn't believe in angels and as we all poured out of our cars these guys turned around and said to me that was incredible that was the most amazing thing I've ever had that was I, I don't know how I feel these poor guys were saying they're definitely rednecks the equivalent of rednecks and they were just uh, saying to me you know we couldn't actually see the road when we were following you because the sun was so bright in the center of the road and the dust and all we did was just fo um, follow your tail lights now I'm shortening this story because it was very powerful. It was very involved at the time. But I remember me standing there um, also feeling the same awe. And, you know, because the energy is so intense, it's almost frightening, but it's beautiful at the same time, especially in a crisis. And I just remember looking at these guys and saying to them, if you couldn't see the road because of the sun in the middle of it, what makes you think I could? because I couldn't, but I also knew that I actually felt like somebody was driving the car for me, that they were not even um, in my body. I was, my hands were on the wheels. It would be like actually if these, if this shape had a form that had a human body, it was like they were sitting on my lap and they were moving my hands to keep the car on the road. And I don't know if my children all remember it. I know that my son does um, because it was very powerful for him as well. So anyway, I'm just giving you one little miracle there that warms the cockles of my heart as I tell it, even if I don't tell you the whole story. So to help put this into perspective for you, you know, we talked about um, calling for a parking bay or whatever, which are just a little simple things, okay? They're not really big deals, but when we call regularly, and this is the advice we get from the angels, is that when we call often, it's kind of like cementing, I guess, a neural pathway. It creates a devic seal. And 
I suppose to release the guilt that we have for calling for a miracle when it's not a time of crisis is this understanding that we're actually just asking for a blessing. We're asking for a favour from a friend. If they can help us to find a parking bay or whatever, they're only too happy to, as you would be, if you knew that somebody needed something. It does have, they don't have to wait until something awful is happening to be able to ask for help. But this could be a real challenge for us humans to ask for help. Um, in the first instance and then to be open to receiving it. So you can practice it by doing the small questions or the small miracles first. Um, and then because this divic seal is created, now just to be clear, this is because when we communicate, we're communing, communicating generally on a telepathic level. So the divic seal is a telepathic link between you and the creator and the angels it attunes you to their vibration and it helps to make the connection easier each time you call it strengthens and so for example i gave you that um, scenario when i talked about parking the first time i went out and did it i put some real energy into it shall we say you know i really concentrated and focused and all the rest of it and i went through the whole rigmarole that we do as part of raising our vibration and all of this kind of thing and then as time went by it just seemed to happen um and i might I didn't actually, in the end, I wasn't actually really doing any form of sincere, intense praying like what we see here with this young girl. It simply was jump in the car, turn the ignition on, off we go, thanks for the parking space. I know you guys have got this covered. You've shown it to me so many times. I forgot to mention that sincere gratitude is always going to help strengthen anything and encourage the angels to continue to bless us in angelic showers. Um, and if you've ever had one of those my goodness me that is a miracle and you know you could also even ask because most of the miracles that I've experienced and this is why I'm just sharing this with you they have happened in front of other people there's been witnesses around that have actually seen it and so it hasn't just been part of my personal growth and showing me that there's something more out there and that it's incredible and amazing but it also shows other people and I'm reminded as I say this, although I'm deviating from the Devic Seal conversation, I remember one time I actually got a full-blown angelic blessing shower in front of other people. Um, I'm not going to go into why, but I'm going to say that the poor husband partner of the lady I was visiting, I was actually over at their house and we were having a conversation in the kitchen and um, there was a, a miraculous like whirlwind through the house and um, of course I couldn't see myself but we were sitting at the kitchen table and we were just looking at each other going wow that was intense what was that anyway her poor husband who was not into anything energetic I might ask or not ask say he came running into the house and he was shaking because he felt the energy is really high and he was saying, what was that? Do I need to be frightened? You could see the male protector instinct was coming and I've got to go and do something. And we both laughed because her and I are into energy and angels. We both laughed and looked and said, no, you don't need to worry. There's no harm here. No ill intent, no malice, nothing like that. And so he went back outside and he was doing the barbecue and I thought, oh, I better go out there and have a chat with him. And I did. And um, he was like, do I need to be worried about that going forward? He said, because I know that it wasn't um, ill intent. He said, I can feel because he could feel it as well. He said, I can feel that it's not a bad thing at all. And it does feel kind of nice, like what you say. He said, but that was just really bizarre. And I'm not used to that. He said, and I don't want to have um, this happening all the time. It's like, okay. I don't know what happened with his life, um, you know, moved on in different directions. But the bottom line is he became aware that day. If he was a non-believer before, he became aware that day that there are things that are bigger than himself. And I think that's probably the best, from my perspective, that's the best place to start. And I guess when we talk about Hamid and miracles and angelic blessings, um, that yeah this is what they want they want people to experience it they want to open people up and then what people do with that that miracle connection the miracle of life that's up to them so I hope by now that you're actually at that position where you can sit down and reflect and ask yourself you know um, 
Do you have an open mind and an open heart to the miracle of angels? What would it take to convince you of a miracle or of angels? Um, within your current situations and problems and all of this kind of thing, would it take a miracle to resolve these problems? And are these problems ones that are ego-centered? You know, if it's a divinely inspired um, problem, is it one that you've got issues around unworthiness that are acting as a barrier to you manifesting your dream? Or is there issues there that are blocking you from manifesting because you are so um, full of fear and anxiety, I guess? Um, can you see situations in your life right now that reflect back to you your lack of faith and limitation or an unclear vision? In which case, it's time to ask for a miracle and step into transforming your life. So I guess the most amazing thing that we can say about miracles is that it is through experiencing miracles, literally. They're not, um, they're observable, um, they're sensual. It's not just a case of, I think I've had a miracle. You actually know, in the end, you feel it and it goes right through your body because we are talking about like electrical currents or whatever. So when we talk about the embrace and the love of the angels, we are talking about this kind of um, electronic activation of us. And when we do this, there's this very amazing, um, incredible sensation of this amazing, magnificent love and adoration that the angels send to, um, send to us. We just feel so loved. It doesn't matter what we've done, where we've been, um, what we consider to be our inadequacies and all the rest of it. We know that um, the love of the angels is kind of like the love that a, a parent, well, more than a love for a, a parent has for a child because, you know, I am a mother, I'm a grandmother and I do love my children, but and I say, but that sounds dreadful. That wasn't what I meant. I'm trying to do a comparison between the love we as human beings hold for even our own kin. There is a love associated with this, but I think even under the best of circumstances, we can be disapproving as parents or as grandparents about our children's behavior. The difference is when it comes to divine love, it doesn't feel like there's disapproval. It doesn't even actually feel like there's disappointment or judgment. All right, And for those people that are sitting there going like, what? So that means that we don't have to worry about anything. Oh, we do because we create our own karma. Um, what this means is that the love that we get from the divine is not a harsh, critical one. It's just like, oh dear. Because what we do to one and ourselves, we do to everybody. So they're going to feel it as well. If we carry guilt or sorrow or whatever, they're going to feel that. Right? Of course, they can heal themselves quite quickly of it. So they have, um, where human beings strive to have empathy, the divine already has it. They don't have to strive and try. They've got it. So they can empathize with us. And because they have got foresight, where obviously for us humans, we're blinkered, they can see how it's going to play out for us. And it's sort of like, oh, dear, this is going to be difficult and instead of um they they just go to work shall i say they just go to work to support us through whatever crisis and drama we've created so we do it's not that um we don't experience consequences to our actions and deeds and that kind of thing we do but th what is consistent with whatever we do throughout our lives is divine love and support now the thing is too that we will see too that some people have done some really dreadful stuff through their life, but they actually turn themselves around. And when I say dreadful, I'm talking about human to human, but they can turn themselves around. That becomes a transformation. And Hamid is part of the transformation to assist us as individuals to bring the presence of the eternal, the creator, and even our internal self, eternal self aspect as part of our living and being and that is the true miracle that is the biggest miracle out of all the miracles that we can have is this inner transformation where we surrender to the creator and to the love of the divine because that is amazing i'm not sure if i've done this justice by all means pop your own comments up please
So, my friends, that is it for today. Um, We've now talked about Hamid. I've given you all the information that I can give to you comfortably within this format. I do encourage and invite you once again to share your own experiences. I love hearing um, the stories of angelic blessings. They just warm the cockles of my heart. So please do feel free to write your own comments up. In the meantime, if you like what you hear, don't forget to... I'm doing the plug doing the plug because that's what we do don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if this is content that you want to see more of Um, and feel free to recommend the channel if you find that it's something that blows your hair back is what we say over here and in the meantime I'm going to say thank you very much for being part of my journey as always I'm going to love you leave you have a blessed day take care of yourselves see you on the next video bye bye for now